There was a funny moment during Ty Herndon's interview with Taste of Country. I guess you could call it a revelation, at least for us. The noise in my head has been so loud my whole life that I'd gotten so used to it that I could hear nothing else. Mm. It was just, it was like a swarm of bees. Not that part. That's the part of the interview that might resonate deep if you or anyone you hold close has dealt with mental illness. Ty has, and his candid insights are an epiphany. What he said next brought some levity to the conversation. Even Some of my friends were like, well, we could have told you that. I'm like, well, why the f*** it? <laughs> no, why, yeah, yeah, why, yeah. why the heck did you? Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I, it's I, late also, and I've, I've become a cusser in sobriety just to get you know, right. this goes together. <laughs> Hey, it's Billy Dukes, and 30 minutes with Ty Herndon may not change your life, but it might. At the very least, it'll open your eyes to the realities of what he's been through, and from there, maybe you can find a lesson for later. I thought to myself, I'm not going to get out of this alive. And a calmness came over me, man. Like, I have, um, it was just the most peaceful thing. I made a decision on that I was going to leave this earth. Man, if there's an artist who's been through more and still come out the other side singing, I'd like to meet him. Drugs, rehab, sham marriages, being broke after having millions, the hardships of being gay in country music in the 1990s, and most recently, a suicide attempt. He detailed that during a candid conversation with People magazine in June. Four pages in the middle of the magazine. This, this, it's, not, it's not even a bragging right. It's like when I, when I opened it up and looked at it, and you see 30 years of your life laid out in, a, in an article that says, I know I shouldn't be alive today. And you see all of that in, in those four pages. And you just, I, I sat down and took a look at it. I was like, holy crap. I don't know where I'd be proud of this. Every scar, every broken heart is exactly what you need. And I swear, you won't know it till you get there. During this interview, he answers some important follow-up questions, like what triggered the relapse that led him to considering swallowing 27 sleeping pills and waiting to die? Why does he think sobriety will stick this time? And why didn't he come forward about his addiction until this year? Ty's story is all over a new album called Jacob that's now available in stores and at digital streaming providers. God or the Gun is the song you want to skip to for those dark moments. But the full album is really dynamic. There's a lot of heartbreak, which makes sense because through all of this, he and his longtime partner broke up. Dents on a Chevy with Terry Clark is a throwback bop that his longtime fans will love. Here's a clip of that before we dive into the interview. Go together like sand and good weather, like the most pressing question still out there was what went wrong, and Ty, nervously, opened up like few in country music ever will. He'd not done many interviews on the topic before he sat down with Taste of Country Nights host Evan Paul. By the way, the full interview, unedited, is available at Taste of Country Nights On Demand podcast. Links to that are in the description section. You know, my biggest struggles have been sobriety, man. You know, I, I, I've uh, had long stretches of, of sober. And then, you know, during COVID, like a lot of folks did, there was a waiting list for rehab. They were doing rehab online. Because people were dropping like flies. Because it was the end of days. Yeah. You know, well, shoot, I'm go out with my drug of choice, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and sitting. And I actually became a little ashamed of my stories because I sat in my, in my house uh, one week with 140 tour dates, a book deal, a made for TV, uh, tell my story. It, it was all laid out. Um, and then three days later, um, you know, it was all gone. It was, like a, it was like a career tornado came through. But, man, I wasn't alone. I mean, my God, I watched my neighbors, who's a prominent guitar player, I watched, I watched him tow off his car, you know, and I just, there were, I still get emotional talking about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Be a man, Ty. Here we go. No, damn, <laughs> man, take it. The pandemic was the second great tragedy of Ty's 2020, however. In Nashville, a tornado devastated certain areas in early March. It devastated Ty as well, wiping out his neighborhood. It was Armageddon, man. And, uh, and I understood immediately. I, I thought to myself, I know I'm going to relapse. It had been 18 years, man. And I, I could no more tell you how to go anywhere to buy drugs, you know. But interestingly enough, somewhere in my DNA remembered. So um, it, was, it was just crazy. And I thought to myself on that day, because it was, you know, it was a relapse that lasted, you know, a week. Because uh, when you're really, really hurting and you're really, really sad and you're, you're I always said the drugs were my medicine. You know, I, I was, I was, I didn't want to know my real life. 
and I was I was just dumping things in, in my system. Talk to many people that may have relapsed, that have had many years of sobriety. You're drinking or doing it for a different reason, so it doesn't feel the same. Okay. Yeah, it just mirrored the pain. So I knew pretty quick that um, that um, that I, I thought to myself, I'm not going to get out of this alive. And a calmness came over me, man. Like I have, um, it was just the most peaceful thing. I made a decision on that I was going to leave this earth. Um, I'm like, you know, I did it. I, I'm leaving a legacy of music. I'm leaving some pretty good things behind. My family's peaceful. My nephew's grown. Um, you know. It's a good time to go, and uh, people are, people are going to remember you in a good place. Eventually, that New Year's Eve, he gave it a pretty good try, but some physical or celestial element intervened, saving his life. Before he knew it, he was back to a treatment center where he could understand his mental health a little bit better. There, a doctor told him, You may have walked in here, he goes, but your soul was on a gurney. This is the dark part of the interview, and I hope you'll stay to the end because Ty learned a lesson that can really change your life. It's not a solution, but heck if it's not a really useful, powerful tool. Evan asked Ty why he didn't come forward about addiction earlier, and his answer was because it's just a scar he wasn't ready to look at yet, and because he wasn't fully committed to sobriety during those other stints in rehab and the long periods of sobriety that followed. I, I wear it with a badge of honor now. Yeah, I just, I never, I never, um, this last 18 months of my life, um, I, I am sobriety. I was playing a role of sobriety before. Because ah. I, was, I was so damaged, I didn't want to add to the pile. Showing his scars proudly is freeing, Ty says, admitting that going public holds him more accountable. He's a licensed sober companion now who spends his off days helping others get through their own personal trials and struggles. A big part of that for him was a proper mental health diagnosis. Last year, Ty was diagnosed at bipolar he was 59 years old at the time. Was that like an epiphany to you as well? Did that go back and you go, oh, my God. I did. This all makes sense. Was this after the suicide attempt? Yeah. By po- okay, so did you even look back at the suicide attempt yes. and go like, so that wasn't particularly me that woke right. up that morning? The that noise was- in my head has been so loud my whole life that I'd gotten so used to it that I could hear nothing else. Uh-huh. It was just, it was like a swarm of bees. And um, I was like, even some of my friends were like, well, we could have told you that. I'm like, well, why the f it? Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I, it's I, late I, also, in life. I've become a cusser in sobriety just to, you know, it's, it's, right. it goes together. Yeah, because yeah. it's late in life to be, <laughs> di- to be, Very. Di- yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something, man. On the, um, on the second week of, of a, of a med that worked for me. It, you've seen the movie Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. I mean, it was it was like the lambs were silent. I could carry a conversation. I could sit still and talk to you. I mean, I'm just the most awkward, squirmy guy you've ever met in your life because I, there were ticks, you know, and I just, I, I had to become very, very focused on you just to be able to sit there and, and say, what are we going to talk about today? I got you. I didn't understand that. And you know, like, I'm talking to my mom about it. Um, cause, cause, you know, I'm, I'm all of it. I'm ADD. I'm, you know, I, I got the gamut. Sign me up. Sign yeah. me up. And <laughs> mom said, you know, we just when you were a kid, they didn't test for things like that. And so, I mean, I was always in the C group. I had learning disabilities. And I just I had, was very challenged as, as a kid. So much so when I was graduating high school, I actually failed algebra. And my, my math teacher goes, well, you just got a job at Opryland. You're going to have a career in music. So we'll just, we'll just pass you. <laughs> I'll never give her name because she's still working. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, that would that wouldn't be good for her. I yeah, thank yeah. her for that at the same time yeah. because you know I, I, I've had a, a, a beautiful life. But it's been great. At James Flowers Institute in Houston, Texas, helped me understand uh, my my disease and what was going on with me, what was going on, all these unanswered questions, and um, all of a sudden, whether I had, uh, see or see or do or whatever another drink or drug in my life, it seems irrelevant this point because i know what's going on with me exactly yeah now. and it's a peaceful river you won't know it till you get there yeah all right big thanks to ty for joining us and being so honest about what he's been through let him know you appreciate it as well with a thumbs up and a subscribe and
I'm Billy Dukes with Taste of Country. Thanks for watching. I remember there's a plan and it's out of my hands. That was great.